ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Indeed, all praise and thanks for Allah. We praise and thank Him. We seek His help and we ask His forgiveness. We take refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from our sinful deeds. Whoever Allah guides, no one can mislead. And whoever He leaves to stray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. He is one having no partners. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is His servant and His messenger. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon his family and his companions. I'm about to proceed. Now we're less than four weeks away from the blessed month of Ramadan. Um, so inshallah, we should start preparing if we haven't already started. Um, and I want to mention certain aspects of Ramadan. We see Ramadan uh, as the month of Uh, fasting. Many of us see it as the month of fasting, but of course, it's also it's the month of the Quran. You see, and and we we should remember this, inshallah. And we're told uh, in in Surah Al-Baqarah, of course, in the verse mentioning Ramadan, we're told, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, shahr Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran huda lil-nas wa bayinat min al-huda wal-furqan." Okay, that's just the first bit of that verse. Um, meaning the month of Ramadan is the one in which the Quran was sent down, yes, sent down from high on high, revealed, yes. So the month of Ramadan is the one in which the Quran was sent down, and some say for the first time, they had in brackets, yes, for the first time sent down as a guidance for people, for humanity. Huda linnas. And then, وَبَيْنَةٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ And clear signs of that guidance. And al-furqan. Furqan is the criterion. Yes, yeah, the way to distinguish between right and wrong. Okay, so keep these words in mind, inshallah, as we go, go through uh, today's uh, khutbahs, inshallah. Okay, a guidance. And clear signs of that guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. Al-Furqan. Okay. Now, of course, uh, in recent months, those of you who have been here, I've been mentioning this idea of read, Iqra. And we said that Iqra was the first word that was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. And I want to just give a bit of description of this. And some of you will be, will be very familiar with this. Some of you may not. But there will be features, inshallah, there will be features in this which... Uh, very interesting features which you may not have heard before. Okay, so uh, I think it, it, and it's worth reminding ourselves anyway. So it's described that the Prophet six months before he received the first revelation, yes, and this was the first signs of wahi, of inspiration. <coughs> yeah? Six months before the first revelation came uh, in the Mount of Hira, as you know, in, or, and in the cave in the Mount of Hira. Six months before he started having true dreams. Okay. So dreams which then, that he would dream in his sleep. And then they would happen. And it was like it was described as uh, like, like the, the dawn, you know, the brightness of the day. So true dreams, okay, he started having. Um, and... Then it's described that solitude became dear to him, seclusion. Yes, now we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, he was he very much cared for his people already, even before he started receiving revelation. He was known as Al-Amin, the trustworthy. He had good relations with people. Yes, he, 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 uh, <laughs> but solitude, in this period, solitude or seclusion became dear to him. And so he went up into the cave in the Mount of Hira, yes, 
uh, went up. And there's different opinions on how much time he actually spent there or uh, what periods. But one, one opinion is that he was there in the month of Ramadan, you see, from the start. Now, this is one opinion that he was... And he would go back and get provisions from Khadija, radiallahu anha, that the Prophet says, and then he'd go back to the cave. And he was involved in what's described as like sort of ardent devotions, sort of heavy devotions, like worship, of course, but also some say reflection and contemplation and meditation. Yes. And by the way, in the second khutbah, we'll look at how we can apply, inshallah, some of these uh, teachings or some of these happenings to our own lives, inshallah, you'll see. So, so he was, he was in this uh, situation, yes, when um, the angel Jibril, alayhi salam, came to him in the form of a man. Okay, and then he said, and there's this word, Iqra, read, read. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you know, he was unlettered, he could not read or write. And so his initial understanding seems to be that he was being asked to read, like read a script or something of that nature, that he couldn't read. So he said, ma ana biqari, he said, I am not a reader, I cannot read. And then in, in the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or words to the effect that the, the angel, he didn't know what it was at the time of course, but that he... He grasped him, he seized him, and grasped him, held him to himself, squeezed him. And it's described as uh, to the limits of the, uh, the endurance of the Prophet You know? So really, uh, a very strong uh, grasp. Yes. And then he let go of him, and he said, read Iqra again. And the Prophet again, he said, Ma ana biqari. I cannot read, I'm not a reader. Same thing happened, he seized him, grasped him, held him, pressed him to himself until he'd reached the limits of his endurance and then said the same thing. Then this happened three times, okay, three times. And then after the third time, that's when he said, Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. Ikura wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil-qalam allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam The first five ayat of the Qur'an, the first five verses of the Qur'an that were revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. See, and then, as you, as you may know, the Prophet ﷺ, he, he left the cave and he was actually, he was quite anxious about this. He didn't know what had happened to him. And Khadija, radiallahu anha, she comforted him. And then it, the revelation continued later. Now, I, I won't go into those bits. I just want to focus on that, that first experience, inshallah. Um, so, what does it mean, those words? I mean, you, you're probably familiar with the words, but what do they mean? Iqra, read. Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. In the name of your Lord who created. And again, we, we should be careful. In English, we use the word Lord, but rab has all sorts of other meanings, as I've mentioned before. It's not just Lord and Master, but it's also nourisher, nurturer, sustainer. Yes? There's a sort of caring aspect, you might say. Allah SWT, He hasn't just created, but He's sustaining creation. And He nurtures us and nourishes us, you see. Very beautiful uh, description. So, so Iqra bismi rabbi kalladi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who created khalaq. Now, it's very interesting, the scholars say, created what? <laughs> There's no object to that verb. The verb, khalaqa, he created. But, you know, usually you have subject, verb, object, don't you? The subject is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one creating. Khalaqa is the, the, the verb. But what's the object? It's not mentioned. And the scholars say, or some of the commentators say, that when, when the object is not mentioned, it can then refer to anything. Yes. Similar to bismi, bismillah, you see. Bismillah, in the name of your, in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, and then what? You know, in English, that's not a sentence. 
But and again, the commentator says, it, so we can apply it to anything, any situation. So I read in the name of Allah, or I begin in the name of Allah, I eat in the name of Allah. Yes? So, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. He created man, humanity, a human being, from an alaq. It's translated as clot sometimes, a clot or a clot of blood, or something which clings, you see? And from that we have the idea of the, the fertilized egg in the, the embryo, in the fetus of the mother. It clings to the, to, to the uh, uterus, does it not? Yes, by the placenta. Something which clings. And it's also translated as germ cell. You know, the origins, these are our origins. And again, the commentators, they've, made, they've said various things on this. That one, one is that it, it highlights the, our lowly origins. We start from a clot or a clot of blood or a germ cell, something which clings. And then we become you know, a thinking, feeling, reasoning, and inshallah, worshipping human being, worshipping Allah. You know, he's, given us, he's given us reason and... and and emotions and all sorts of things, but starting from that, yes, that clot. That's one thing. So, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقْ إِكُرَا وَرَبُّكَ akram. Read, and your Lord is akram. He's the uh, al akram. He's the the most noble, the most bountiful, the most generous. Yes. الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمِ He uh, created man, uh, sorry, he uh, taught man with the pen. الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمِ He taught with the pen. He taught with the pen. Yes. And so some say uh, it can even mean he taught the use of the pen. Now, even this, we, maybe we don't give much thought to, but it is actually, if you think about it, it is so extraordinary, isn't it? If you think about it, that, that through the use of the pen, through words, so let's say on a page, we can have understanding of the universe around us. I mean, it's a, if you think about it, it's a, we take it for granted, you see. We're so used to it. But it's actually an extraordinary thing that somehow we can gain knowledge of the universe and not even uh, in uh, like this world or the, the universe, the physical universe, but even uh, matters of the ghaib, that which is beyond our perception, our sensory perception. Through what? Through letters, symbols on a page. How does that happen? It's quite extraordinary if you think about it. It's quite, I mean, speech is quite extraordinary, really. How? How is it that these vibrations of air which is what sound is, these waves that are being transmitted from, from my mouth to your ears at the moment, convey meaning somehow. It's mind-blowing, actually. Just vibrations. The, uh, the uh, air molecules are just vibrating, and they're vibrating on, on your eardrums and my eardrums, yes? And it's, it somehow uh, conveys meaning, yes? And, and it, it, can, it can convey... I mean, very powerful uh, meaning, and, and it can evoke very powerful feelings. You know, people can weep at the at hearing words. Yes, or get very angry at hearing words. Hearing these, having these little vibrations in their ears. It's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Anyway, so, uh, so, الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمِ The one who taught with the pen. عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ He taught man, or human being, that which he did not know. So there you are. Those are the first five verses which were revealed to the Prophet Sassam. And, and inshallah we will look in the second khutbah at how a few features of this, a few extra features, and also how we can learn from this and benefit from this and apply the, the, that experience, those experiences that the Prophet has had in our own lives, inshallah.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Okay, how can we apply this? And and we'll go back to the the, the even that first bit of the the true dreams. As you know, those of you who are here, Prophet Sun started receiving true dreams six months before he received revelation. Now. Here's the thing, inshallah, we too can have true dreams. You see, and in fact, the Prophet he said that this is all that is remaining of like prophecy, the true dreams of a righteous believer. And there's a hadith, Sahih hadith, which says that the, the, the true dream of a righteous believer is like 146th of prophecy. Yes. Now, the scholars have, they've speculated, or they've, they've, they've thought about, reflected on, they've reflected on why 146? That's very interesting. I mean, Allah knows best. Yes, but there's, there's a, if you think about it, the Prophet says had true dreams for six months, yes? And then after the first, from the first revelation, he continued receiving revelation for 23 years. So you see, six months is a fraction of 26 years. Is 146. Yes? Work that out. And not that difficult. Half divided by yes, 23. 146. So, so something, so if we do get true dreams, if we get dreams, yes, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us true dreams, and you know, dreams that then uh, are, are, I mean, like the Prophet described it, it was like the dawn, the light of dawn, something, something and something which then happens. You know, this is, alhamdulillah, it's a good thing, inshallah. You see. And then, solitude, seclusion became dear to him. Now, this is something, again, we, we have an opportunity. Ramadan, and I said this is in the context of Ramadan just being less than four weeks away. Yes, Ramadan is a, a period of time, a month, a blessed month, when we can, inshallah, yes, turn away from the usual worldly considerations. Yes, not necessarily completely, yes, but we can largely. In fact, we do. I mean, if even we're fasting, there are certain things which we are keeping away from, at least from dawn to sunset. Yes? So there is a, a turning away from all, you might say, the noise, metaphorically, the noise of dunya. You know, we can be more devoted, yes, and, and we have, like the Prophet he was, uh, was worshipping in, in the cave, yes, and, and devotion, there was ardent devotion as it's described, yes, but he was also reflecting and contemplating and meditating. And Ramadan gives us that, that opportunity as well, to reflect a bit, to contemplate a bit. And we can really uh, magnify this, inshallah, if we actually do the, there's a seclusion practice in Ramadan, ittikaf. Yes? Itikaf. Where we, we go to the masjid for the last ten nights. Now, a lot of masjids though, it's almost like a party-like atmosphere nowadays. You know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of interaction. And unfortunately, of course, a lot of people take, we take our mobile phones in for itikaf. And then we're not actually cutting away from all the noise, you see. Yes? But still, it's still, there's still, I mean... Yes, those who have experienced it, even with the, with the sort of party atmosphere, uh, sometimes. But it's all good. I mean, the, the, it's, it's good speech, alhamdulillah. Yeah? It's not necessarily seclusion, but it's still alhamdulillah. It's a good thing. So, but anyway, it gives us an opportunity, doesn't it? To reflect, to contemplate, to meditate. So there's that opportunity. We can follow the example of the Prophet And he, he went through that period before he started receiving revelation. Now, another aspect of uh, this, this story is that the angel, after telling him to read, you see, the angel uh, squeezed him to the limits of his endurance, you see. Now, one very interesting thing I, I, I read recently is that the Prophet said he didn't fight back, did he? He didn't fight the angel. I mean, he didn't. He was in the form of a man. So there he was being squeezed. But the Prophet says, and he accepted it. 
you see. And, and, and this has been co commented on, that, that uh, you know, he was ready to receive. He was willing to, in some ways, surrender. And this has got to be our approach with the Qur'an as well, <coughs> with revelation, inshallah, you see. That, that we, I mean, the first bit was iqra, read. And as I've said before, reading is not just recitation, yes? I mean, the Prophet ﷺ, he thought that reading was actually reading script at, at that point. At that point, he thought it was like reading script. And he, he said, ma ana bi qari, I, I can't read. I'm not a reader. Yes? But for us, you see, we, we can read the script. We can read the script, but actually, the, 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 the deeper reading, and the Prophet he got it by the end of all that process, that he understood, they say, he understood that he was supposed to receive the revelation, yes, receive and understand, and then eventually convey. Now, we, we have that, those obligations, actually. We're not going to receive revelation in the form that the Prophet did, but we have the revelation actually between our hands when we're holding the Qur'an. Yeah, that is, yes, it's, it's revelation in, in, in script form, in the Mus'haf. So what are we supposed to do with it? Just recite it? Now, alhamdulillah, plenty of people during Ramadan recite Qur'an. We listen to Qur'an in Taraweeh. Yes? Now, it's all good. It's good. But look, when I mentioned that verse, the Shahul Ramadan verse earlier, as a guidance, it was sent down as a guidance for humanity, for people. Guidance, clear signs of guidance, the criterion between right and wrong, the Furqan. That's not going to come just from recitation, is it? So you see, there's a, we, we do need to try and understand. We receive the message in the form, yes, in the form of the, the, that we have now, but we need to try, at least try to understand it. Yes, and, and, and submit to it, to surrender to it, not fight back. The Prophet didn't fight the angel. He didn't fight back. You see. So this is something we need to... And, and you know, this is... Oh, gosh, we've got to stop in terms of time. But, you know, uh, there is a certain, certain... There are certain attitudes we need to have towards learning, you see. As, as it says in the verse... He taught man that which he did not know. He taught the use of the pen, or taught by the pen, and taught man that which he did not know. Now, you know, we, we, there's got to be some humility. We've got to have some humility when it comes to knowledge, you see. The knowledge is there, available for us, you see. But sometimes what happens is we think we already know. You know, we have ideas about things. Don't we? And I, I had this experience just a few weeks ago. Um, someone said to me, and I've got to be careful because it's a client, but someone said to me that, that he, he already knew. Yeah? There was something, it was a specific area, but he already knew. There's nothing for me to sort of... And I've had this experience before where, where uh, sometimes, you know, as, uh, I work as a psychotherapist and a, a marriage counsellor, and I sometimes get, often over the years, I have calls from sisters, from women, who call me up and they say, uh, you know, we have these marriage problems, my husband's got this problem. And I say, well, why isn't he calling me? And then she says, well, he doesn't think that anyone can tell him anything about himself that he doesn't already know. You see. Now, we can't have this sort of attitude, really, in any, any situation. Who do we think we are? All-knowing. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is al-alim. But you know, sometimes we do have this, this sort of attitude. We wouldn't say that explicitly, but the way we behave. Oh, I already know. I can't. How can I learn something? You know, people say this uh, about all sorts of situations. How can I? What's the point of me going to this talk or this circle? I already, I, I know this stuff, people say. No, we can learn. We can learn even from children, can we not? They might be closer to the fitra, the, the pure innate nature, than we are. See, so we've got to have some humility. We don't want to be like those people described in the Quran. Yes? وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفِ They described. 
They, uh, yeah. they said, our hearts are already full of knowledge. Yes, they said our hearts are already full of knowledge, or our hearts are impenetrably wrapped. There's no possibility of further knowledge getting in there. It's already full. And then what? Allah has, has cursed them. Allah. He, he curses them for their kufr, their, their rejection of the truth, their disbelief. And cursing, when Allah curses, they say, some of the commentators, it's like He rejects them. It's a rejection. And, and then for qalila ma yu'minun, little do they believe. So we don't want to be in the, that sort of category, do we? So we've got to be open, we've got to be open, we've got to be open to, um, to, to, to learning. Yes, and it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's teaching us. You know, uh, you know, people sometimes come across things in the Quran, for instance, which they don't like. There are things which doesn't fit in with their likes and dislikes, or their opinions, or their, their, their conception of reality. Now, at that point, we have to have the humility to just say, well, we haven't reached the level where we can understand this. It is the truth. It's, it's al-haq. It is the truth. Yes, we've got to, we've, that belief that it is the truth, we just need to, inshallah, try and discover it. Yes? Try and find it. So anyway, just a few words in terms of how, inshallah, to approach the Quran, how to approach Ramadan as well. Inshallah, just some food for thought. أقول كل هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم الله يكسب this from us for you the all hearing the all knowing وتوب علينا إنك أنت and turn to us in mercy, for you are the accept of repentance, the most merciful. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa qina adhabana. Our Lord grants us good in this world and good in hereafter and save us from the punishment of the fire. Rabbana dhalamna anfusana wa ilam taqfil lana wa farhamna lana kunana wa khasana. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will indeed be amongst the losers. Salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah subhana rabbika rabbil izzati wa ma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa'atimu salatu.